So what I want to cover here is some automation that I've been able to accomplish using PowerShell of conditional access policies. Now you'll find conditional access policies in Endpoint Manager here. We go into Devices, scroll down here, and you'll see that there is conditional access. Now at the moment there are no policies, and another important factor with conditional access is what's known as a named location. So these are typically defined as a country or an IP address, and in this case, remember, you'll need to go to this new location here. All right, and you'll see that we can add by a country location or an IP location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and just create a name location uh, for Australia, just so that uh, basically we can use this in one of the policies. So take a second, you'll see that it has uh, basically been uh, created there. Uh, we'll see that listed there now. So if we go back to our conditional access, we go up to policies, I'm going to create a new policy. So basically what normally happens, one of the most common policies is to restrict uh, access uh, to a country. So in this case, I'm going to restrict it uh, to uh, Australia. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to assign it to uh, all users. So this uh, conditional access will apply to all users. Now the other thing I will note here, it's also best practice to make sure that you do exclude uh, a user here. Um, this allows you to still be able to log in in case there is some issue or the, the policy for some reason does lock you out. So best practice is always make sure that you do exclude uh, a user from the environment. So generally include all users with one exclusion being uh, something like your break glass account. Now for the cloud apps, I'm going to select all the cloud apps because I want that to apply. The conditions here, you'll see that one of the options is location. So if I go into locations, what I want to do is configure this and I want to include every location worldwide, but I also want to basically exclude specific locations which I have predefined. All right, so if we go in here, you'll see that my predefined uh, AU is there and I'm also going to include the uh, MFA trusted IPs just for safekeeping. Now I will go into the access controls here and I'm going to block access. So what that means is is that for all users they are going to have to log in from Australia. Uh, if they don't then they will be blocked there. Right. So I'll go select there and the final thing to note here is I can either uh, enable the policy and turn it on or I can set it to report only and monitor the log. So to make it easy I'm just going to create it here as report only. So I've gone in there and created one. I'll go in and create another policy. So let's uh, call this for example policy 2 and again I will go in here and define uh, all users and I will exclude again uh, my break glass account just in case. All right, so select that. Uh, the client apps, I want that to apply to, uh, again, all my apps and my conditions in this case. What I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to uh, go in here and select client apps, configure, and you'll see that it will then uh, apply that to all of those. All right, so I will go uh, done there. And then I go into grant, and you'll see that I will now block access. Uh, uh, sorry, I will grant access and require that they have multi-factor authentication, uh, marked as compliant, hybrid, we can do approved client apps, we can require a password change and so on. So what I'll do is again, I'll set this to require multi-factor authentication. And once again, I will set this to report only and go in and create. So what I've done this manually is I've gone in and create uh, any named locations, make sure that you do go into this newer portal, this preview portal to see that. And then with that defined, I can go in and create policies that refer to those uh, named locations. Now, as you can appreciate, this is quite cumbersome if you are doing a lot of these policies, especially when you're initially setting up a tenant. So what I've done is I've created scripts to automate this whole process. Now, these scripts are not freely available. I make them commercially available. I will let you know how to obtain these scripts um, if you do wish to purchase them. Uh, otherwise, I will also show you where my GitHub repository is that has a number of uh, free examples that you can go and take advantage of. So if we pop across to our code here, you'll see that I have already connected to uh, the PowerShell environment. I've connected to my tenant. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to back up my location. So what I want to do is I'm going to take the locations which I've defined in my conditional access policy, and I'm going to back them up to a JSON file. Now you'll see that script will run. You'll see it will output a file there to um, a location. 
and it will be in JSON format. So there is the file there, and you'll notice that the way I've defined this file is CA lock. So that's how I can define that it's uh, conditional access location. Okay, so that file is now done. Now I'm going to go in and back up the policies. So firstly, I backed up locations. Now I want to back up the policies. So I hit enter, basically a very similar process. It will go out, read the policies and export those policies, as you can see there, to a file. So now I've got three. I have my location, which was the CA lock, and I've got my two policies, and you'll see that the policy name um, is inside the file name there, so I can identify that. Now, with my existing conditional access environment backed up, um, I'm now going to go in and I'm going to delete the location. So I'm going to use an automated process to go in and remove those locations. So you'll see here that it's removing the AU location that I created. So again, if I go into my name locations in the portal here, have a look at this, you'll see there are no more locations here. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to delete any policies. So I remove the locations. Now I'm going to remove the policies. So I'm going to have a nice clean environment to uh, basically uh, work with. So it'll take a moment or two. You'll see that it will tell you the uh, name of the policy, also the good. So if we can now go back to our uh, conditional access policies, we should have uh, basically no policies in there. Let's just refresh the page to get the latest update. So you'll now see there are no policies and no named locations. Now what I'm gonna do is put in some best practices, policies uh, and locations to uh, change that from what was there originally. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put in the uh, best practice locations. All right, now I base that on the IP address that I'm connecting from and also the country that I'm connecting from. So in this case, I'm doing that from Australia. So if I again go back in here now and have a look at my name locations, we should see, once we, oops, refresh the page and then go to that new location. We have uh, two new locations here identified as best practice. So if I go into the local country one, we will see that it now has a name of Australia and also an IP address. So again, we're good to uh, good to go there. Now, once we've got our name locations as best practice, what we're going to do is we're going to add the uh, best practice policies. All right. Now we're going to add a number of these, uh, and they could refer to those name locations. All right. So one of the first ones is only allow uh, trusted locations. So those trusted locations could be country, they could be IP addresses. Again, based on the locations. I'm going to block legacy auth and I'm also going to require um, MFA and I'm also going to block uh, potentially anything that has high sign-in risk. I'm also going to set a policy for requiring compliant devices to connect to my environment and also approved applications. All right, so again, if we go back in here and we have a look at our policies, you'll see now I have a number of uh, policies in here and some of these have been set to report only. So the reason that is done is to prevent an accidental lockout of uh, the environment or this current user. You can just go back in and enable them. So for example, this one here that requires MFA, I'm actually going to go and change that before it asks me for uh, MFA, but as you can see, it kicked in immediately. So let me go in and get that um, number that I need to actually log in. So you can see how quickly the new conditional access policies, best practices ones have kicked in. So I'm gonna verify that, that should allow me uh, back in. Uh, that's a good example of why some of these other policies here are basically set to report only. Because if you do uh, not set it up correctly then, or do not have the right environment, for example, you aren't on a compliant device, uh, then you may struggle to get access. So what I'm going to do, even though this was originally, I'm going to set it to report only. And you'll see that, again, I've given a warning here to exclude the current user. So what I'll do is save that. So I've set that to report only uh, just in this instance, right? So now if we go back to here, what I'm going to do again is go in and now that I'm maybe not happy, I want to restore it to the original environment. I'm going to again delete the locations that I created there under best practices. So you'll see this go through and delete those locations which were set up as part of the best practices um, operation. And then it's going to go in and delete the best practice scripts, uh, best practice policies there. And again, what I'm trying to do is wipe the tenant completely. So it's going to delete all those policies that were created. Again, you'll see it remove um, the uh, trusted 
environment, it will move the legacy auth, the require MFA, and all the others. It will give you the name of the policy and also the GUID in case you do need to refer to it. Now, once this is complete, what I'm going to do is restore the original policies that I backed up to a JSON file back into uh, the environment, put it back the way it was. All right, so in theory, if we now go back here and have a look, refresh this page, we should see there are no more policies again. We go into our named locations, look at the locations. You'll see there are, again, no named locations. So we're back to a nice, clean environment. So if it enter here, what it's going to do is it's going to go and import the locations. All right, now you'll notice there are a number of different JSON files there and the script will automatically determine whether they refer to a policy or a location. That's why you see some of the red. If we now go in and import those policies again, so it's again going to go in and read those policies for the JSON files it found. It's going to make judgments around the correct GUIDs, match those up for me as well. And you'll see here that anything, because I'm creating the policy, any location JSON file will be uh, not suitable as a policy. So that's rejected in this process. Now, if I go back to my uh, thing here and refresh the page here, look at my locations and we go in and look at the new preview portal. You'll see this is the one that I created originally. And if I go back to my policies, you'll see that I'm back to a starting point here of policy two and also restrict to AU, which were the original ones. Now, the difference here is when I import, I set them to report only initially. Now, the reason for that is I don't want to enable them uh, because bringing in or importing policies will mean that some of the GUIDs have changed. Even if the locations are the same and all of that sort of stuff, the GUIDs can be different and that can, again, result in a lockout of an, an unexpected lockout of the account. So generally what I do when I import these um, using this automated process is I will always set them to report only uh, so that they can be verified and turned on manually to make sure that they do uh, work. So that's basically the process. So again, what I ran through was I created a existing environment manually. I then backed that up. I went in, deleted that. Then I went in and added best practices policies. I then deleted those and restored the original uh, policies that I backed up to JSON files. Now, if you do wish access uh, to these and many other scripts that I do uh, create and make available, please take the time to visit ciaopspatron.com. These and scripts for Endpoint Manager and so on are available on subscription. And if you do wish to get access to my uh, free offerings here, you'll find that at github.com forward slash director CIA. And there are a number of repos there that you can freely access. Again, look at the uh, Office 365 typically is where I have a lot of stuff in there. So that's all available free. So GitHub is free. And if you are interested in these uh, paid scripts here that I have uh, created and any ones that I do create in the future, I recommend you take a moment and have a look at ciaopspatron.com. But hopefully this video has given you a bit of an outline, an idea of what is possible and how you can automate the setting up management of conditional access using uh, PowerShell to do that. I take this opportunity to thank you very much for watching the video.